everyone, it's Madison and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing my May 2021 wrap up. So in May, I'm going to give a little bit of stats to start off with. I read a total of eight books, which is 2,601 pages. <laughs> my average rating was 3.875 stars out of five. And of those, I had three five-star books, two four-star books, two three-star books, and one two-star books. I had zero one-stars, which is, which is amazing, and I only had the DNF one book, which I will mention in just a second. Of those, I read four standalone books and four books that are a part of series, which I plan on continuing all of them. And um, for my genres, I read three books that were fantasy, two of which were high fantasy, one was an urban fantasy, and then two sci-fi, which are really just dystopian sci-fi, um, two contemporaries, and one non-fiction memoir. So during the month of May, I participated in the Asian Readathon hosted by With Cindy, and I um, was able to read seven books for the Asian Readathon and really complete all of my prompts. So I'm just going to go over all of the prompts and all the books I used for that, and then I'll talk about each of the books individually as I finish them. So, um, the twist for the Asian Readathon was that each book you read had to be written by an author of a different ethnicity, Asian eth ethnicity, and I was able to successfully do that. I read books by authors with seven different, different ethnicities, which is amazing. So, the first prompt was read any book written by an Asian author, and for that I read Legend by Marie Lu, who is Chinese, and An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir, who is Pakistani. For prompt two, um, which is read any book featuring an Asian protagonist, I read When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Manan, who is Indian, and A Very Large Expanse of Sea by Taha Ramathi, who is Iranian. For prompt three, I read um, read any book by an Asian author in your favorite genre. I read The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa, who um, this book is a Orwell-esque novel, which is like sci-fi dystopian, which is turns out to be one of my favorite genres because three of my favorite books now, um, including this one, are <laughs> are this kind of genre. Prompt for read any nonfiction book written by an Asian author. I read First They Killed My Father by Luang Ung, who is Cambodian. The final prompt, which is read any book written by an Asian author that's not US centric. I had started to read The Kite Runner by Khalid Hosini, who is Afghan, and unfortunately I couldn't finish it. It um, covered some topics that were I just found way too triggering for me and it was too much, so I put the book down, which I highly encourage doing if it turns out to be too much for you. And instead, I read Wicked Fox by Kat Cho, who is Korean, and this is set in Seoul, South Korea, which is obviously not the US. Now it's time to get in to all of the books that I read this month. So the first book I ended up reading um, was The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa, which I give five stars. I absolutely love this book. I picked it up because I thought it was going to be the same kind of atmosphere and genre as two of my favorite books of all time, The Giver in 1984, and it actually turned out to be exactly that. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, the beginning for me turned out to be very, very slow. It was dedicated to a lot of world building. It's essentially set on this unnamed island and is following an unnamed protagonist who is a novelist, who is a writer. And um, on this island, things periodically like disappear and the inhabitants of the island no longer remember or feel any emotional attachment or connection to the ideas or things or places that sort of disappear. And all of this is kind of enforced by the memory police. So this book was very atmospheric and very like haunting and uh, it was exactly the kind of story I was looking for which I was very very excited for. Um, the very beginning for me was very slow and so I didn't know if I was going to enjoy it as much as I did but the ending and like the second half of the novel really sold it for me. Um, it's not a story of like a happy ending and it's not a plot that's st centered around like stopping or fixing the order of this world like most dystopian novels. Rather, it's, um, rather most characters accept this life without much question and they don't really see any other way of living so there's really no like rebellion or like 
forces trying to stop all this going on, which I honestly really appreciate because I find that consistently throughout dystopian novels and they're never like my favorite kind of dystopian novel. And um, what really sold this book for me from going from four stars to five stars and being one of my favorite books, it's really the symbolic and storytelling parallels between the main character's um, novel that she's writing and the actual plot of the story. It was so good and so phenomenal and just had me at several places just putting down the book and just kind of staring at the ceiling and being like oh my gosh <laughs> it's insane you know it it was so just so well written and so so good um and it's a wonderful translation because it was originally written in japanese and translated to english and it was just phenomenal um it didn't feel like a translation and it feel rough or bumpy reading it. The writing was beautiful and um, I highly, highly recommend it if um, these, that kind of novel um, is your kind of taste. It's amazing. Next up, the second book I read was When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Manan. Um, I gave this book two stars. I was not a fan of it. Um, I picked it up thinking it was going to be a light, fun, contemporary, you know, about two nerds and it was going to be have a great inclusion of Hindi culture and while it did have a good inclusion of this culture I felt like halfway through it it kind of just got rid of it completely and became just an Americanized cliche story with like not the best writing you know it wasn't the best um it essentially follows Dimple and Rishi who are pretty much set into this arranged marriage as like teenagers they're both like 18 and just have just graduated high school about to go to college and um while Dimple is like completely against this arranged marriage Rishi who's very traditional is all for it and it's pretty much them trying to figure out that and then eventually they have like their own romance outside of what their parents desire even though it is with each other um I felt like it was way too over the top and way too ridiculous and way too many cliches that didn't make sense in the in like the concept of the story it was supposed to be set at like a coding summer program but like none of them did any coding <laughs> and then there was a talent show um, where like the main two characters danced and it was like a required talent show to get you placed in like the top for this coding program but like why are you doing a talent show in the middle of the coding program it just it, and it seemed like only like a plot device for the characters to have their cliche moments and it was just all these tropes Ugh. I was not a fan of it um not at all and like the only thing that saved it for me like I mentioned before was the inclusion of the Indian and Hindi culture at the beginning half of the novel even though it kind of got ditched halfway through um that's why it's not a complete and total one star honestly I'm just kind of indifferent about this book and after this month I'm really just never going to think about it ever again yeah essentially third book I read was A Very Large Expansive Sea by Tahara Mafi. Wow, I gave this book five stars. It was absolutely phenomenal. All I really knew about this book going in was that it centered around a Muslim girl in the aftermath of 9-11 and I was already intrigued by that premise and I knew a lot a lot of people loved it and I I was not an exception. I absolutely loved this book. It was beautifully written and written in like the classic contemporary light, easy to read, but it had so much beauty to it. Um, and then the story it was telling, um, I fell in love with all of the characters and I loved how layered and complex this story was, how none of the characters felt flat or 2D. A lot of them have many interests and they were beyond just the normal stereotypes for, you know, religious or um, race reasons. Um, there was so much to all these characters, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, and personally for me, romance is not really a thing I like to focus on in a story. I like there to be more plot. And while this was definitely romance focused, I felt like it wasn't as focused on that so much as the impacts of, um, the relationship it had on everyone else and like the town and the high school and on the characters themselves and the kind of prejudice, um, and racism normal people hold especially during that time towards our main character it was just it had me sobbing at 1 a.m over it it was so so amazing and i highly highly recommend this book the next book i ended up reading was legend by marie lu my first physical book of the month i ended up annotating it a bit and i gave this four out of five stars i picked this up simply because i knew it was very much a well-loved dystopian novel in the early 2010s when dystopian was all the rage and um 
it had the exact vibes I was looking for in this book. Um, it was the exact kind of story I loved to read in middle school and that really got kept me continually, um, continuously hooked on reading. Um, during the time, middle school is when I read The Maze Runner, Divergent, Hunger Games, all of those classic dystopian books. And um, Legend definitely falls into that category and I'm very glad to be revisiting this sort of nostalgic part of my life. Um, even though it was only like a couple years ago. <laughs> Um, so this book essentially follows Day, a famous criminal, and June, a sort of prodigy, an esteemed soldier um, who is kind of sent and vows to kill Day after he supposedly kills her own brother. Um, it's set in like a dystopian era Los Angeles with rebels who are called the Patriots fighting back against, you know, the evil government called the Republic. And, you know, it was just so classic and so fun. And um, I really did enjoy it. I also really loved Act 3 and the heist that happened. Um, just, just really fun. It was super fast paced. I read it all pretty much in one sitting um, during my 24 hour, hour readathon, which I have linked above if you want to see. I think maybe it's, I don't know. I'll have it linked above or linked down in my description if you want to see it. And, um, you know, it was just a lot, a lot of fun. So I'm really glad I picked up this book and I'm excited to continue on with this series and continue the classic dystopian vibes. Next book that I picked up was An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. So I borrowed this book from one of my friends who absolutely loves this author. Um, she's one of her favorites for young adult and fantasy. And she let me borrow both this and the author's second novel, Sorcery Reforms, which I plan on reading hopefully next month. Um, in June, and I um, gave this book three stars. It was okay, I enjoyed it, but definitely not something that I would obsess over or love. Um, it follows Isabel, who is a prodigy portrait artist, as the back of the book describes, and she ends up painting human emotion, human sorrow, into the eyes of one of her patrons, who is a fey prince, and this essentially destroys his reputation because human emotions are seen as a humongous weakness in the Fey world. So he takes her to kind of testify at the Autumn Court that he's a prince of and kind of say, you know, this is, um, this is not me. This is, um, a mistake and it's not actually a human emotion I experience and that sort of thing. And he takes her on this journey and it essentially just goes off the rails as you would expect. And they're faced with a kind of a larger threat that they have to unravel towards the fey world so i absolutely love the writing that um one of the main reasons my friend loves it so much is because of the author's writing style and how beautiful it is and i do have to agree it's a very very beautiful writing style however the book was really really short only 300 pages and for a fantasy standalone there wasn't um, enough, I feel like there wasn't enough space for a very full fleshed out plot or characters or world building. However, I did like the world building we get because it was actually my first book with Faye, so I felt like it was a very good introduction for me, especially because I plan on reading some stories with Faye farther down the line. And, um, I thought, you know, while the plot was relatively very, very weak, um, there were certain, like, discussions of, like, human emotions and what it means to live and, like, the gifts we're given and how we kind of take that for granted. I love those kind of things that it discussed and it talked about. I felt like it was very, very well done. So, it kind of saved the novel and made me um, enjoy it enough to give it three stars. The next book I ended up reading was Wicked Fox by Kat Cho, and I gave this book also gave this book three stars. Um, so I personally love mythology retellings set in the modern world or fantasy worlds, so I was really really excited for this novel. However, I was let down a little bit, mainly because the middle of the novel it was too slow for me and I felt like throughout like the rest of the plot after about a third of it it would ju just dragged on and on and I just it wasn't really be it wasn't really it for me um it's pretty much set in Seoul South Korea and it follows Myung Agumiho who has to feed on chi or the life force of men to survive and remain immortal. It also follows Jihoon who mistakenly stumbles upon Myung one night and suddenly her life is kind of like in his hands and I thought it was 
a very interesting premise. Um, I really loved learning about all of the mythology because I was not aware of it and it was really fun to kind of educate myself on that along with just enjoying this story. It was a lot of fun. Um, and I thought there was a very romance focused plot, um, but there was enough of like the regular fantasy plot that I wasn't like completely bore bored by the romance for a while. However, when the romance kind of took over and it wasn't so much the fantasy plot and I felt like the fantasy plot was no longer like as important and as developed and it's kind of like the author gave up on that. I wasn't as much of a fan of it anymore simply because I just romance. It, I didn't come for the romance, I came for the mythology and the fantasy and the plot. I didn't come for, you know, that. But um, I did enjoy the morally gray discussion of what was more valuable, the life of one seemingly, you know, innocent person or the life of dozens or hundreds of not so seemingly innocent people. I thought it was a very good discussion with no real clear answer and um, I really liked that up until the end where I felt like the end it was too much of just an easy giveaway ending that just worked out way too well for all the characters. Um, I didn't really want that kind of ending. Um, I'm not really quite sure what kind of ending I would want or what kind of solution so I felt like they did the best they could, the author did, but um, I would like to see that fleshed out more and um, I felt like it was just solved way too easily especially because we had 400 pages of build up to this and I, I was just kind of let down by that ending. However, I did enjoy the dynamics and relationships between the characters in the beginning and how they were tested over the course of the book. I just really felt like the pacing was off for much of the much of the story and all the other stuff I discussed just ended up me giving it three stars. So, wow, I really don't know how to speak. Okay, so the next book I read was First They Killed My Father by Luang Ung. This is a memoir following the author as a young girl, six, seven, eight years old, as she lived through the Khmer Rouge takeover of Cambodia during the 1970s. So I had no idea about any of this history. Thank you, American public school system. But so that means I experienced the story and this history for the first time ever through the author's eyes and it was so real and so heartbreaking and I was not ready for that experience but I'm so so grateful I did read this book. Um, its attention to the small details and building up this world and this atmosphere um, is so amazing and then it just makes it all the more devastating devastating when all of this is sort of ripped from um the author author's life and she's just cast as this very young child into the real world way too quickly um it was a kind of insight that I feel like history textbooks and lectures would never have given me in the first place if I had ever learned about it and I feel like that's what makes this book so incredibly special and so needed um so I highly recommend reading this book if you haven't already. It's wonderfully written and had me in all of my emotions. I gave this book five stars for a reason. And finally, the last book I ended up reading for this month and finished it on the last day of May, and that is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. So I gave this book four stars. I picked this book up so incredibly excited for it because I saw it on Time Magazine's top 100 fantasy books of all time and I was just so excited to see you know this unique story and um something just new and different to the YA fantasy genre and um yeah I kind of dis was very disappointed <laughs> by that because I didn't really see how it could even have made onto this list because it to me it just seemed like cliche after cliche and the world building and the setup of the plot um our two main characters Laia and Elias you know just happen to be the children of very important political leaders on two sides of the war of this world and one Laia is the daughter of the resistance leaders um fighting against you know the bad bad government and the other is Elias um the son of the commander of the elite army and best fighter in this army for the govern for like the empire but you know god forbid he not be he be morally gray at all um because he regrets every single person he's ever killed or stuff like that and it was just so incredibly cliche 
and you know our entire setup for the first 50 pages of the book is Lia's brother is taken from her um, and she has to team up with the resistance to go and spy um, on this military academy or Elias just happens to be and of course we have the romantic spark between the two main characters but wait let's make it a love triangle no a love square between all of these characters and it's just uh, I did I just I didn't I didn't enjoy it and it felt like such a cliche classic setup for you know any fantasy or even just any dystopian novel and I really wasn't feeling it simply because I had such high expectations of it because of how weird it ended up on this on this list for best fantasy books and I was just immediately felt like I was disappointed however I did keep reading and um I was impressed uh, by how the author took this setup and made it into such a riveting action-packed story that I personally found very very hard to put down and it really kept me hooked from page like 150 all the way to the end um, which is 450 pages so it's a very large fantasy book um, and the ending I felt like took a cliche um, took a trope and didn't really end it how I would have expected it to so I was very very appreciative of that um, and I feel like this book really proves that no matter the cliche if done right it can be turned into something original somewhat original and very captivating and even if it may just seem like the same story that's been done a thousand times over it can still become a somewhat unique one and um, I really do appreciate that However, I still don't see how it could have made it onto that list. I am going to continue I'm going to continue this series for an Ember in the Ashes and hopefully it will get even better and maybe not be as cliche and we can get rid of the love square <laughs> that was going on and we don't have to see that come back again. I have no idea. But um, I do plan on reading continuing this series on in June. Well, there you go. That is all eight books I have read in May. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Um, I plan on having my June TBR out in the next couple days. I plan on posting videos every Sunday and Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. So if you want to see every video I post and just follow along with me on this journey, um, make sure to hit the subscribe button and comment down below if you um, have any other opinions on these books or if you would like me to read certain books um, on my shelves or that you think I would like from this wrap-up that would be greatly greatly appreciated. I'm always looking for more books to put on my list to read even though my TBR is overflowing. Um, and until next time I hope you guys are reading some amazing books and I will see you in my next video. Bye!